Hello and welcome to MIP TV and with me as always, the man who reviews books, who lives in the library and spends it spends it spends his time um in in heavy heavy tones, Mr. Bob Cook. So how are you, Bob? Very well. Yeah, I thought you were gonna say Harry Potter. Well, you know. <laughs> they have that in the library, don't they? Boy that lives under the <laughs> under the uh city or whatever it was. Yeah, so yeah. In, in, hello, nice to talk. Yeah, so in this in this video we're gonna Look at a really brand new book, or brand new at the time the video yeah, was made, yeah, and it's we, we've already we've already reviewed this author. So if you are watching, yeah. just do the search 100, 100, tip, 100 tips in TA by Mark Widdison. But That's this right. is a this is a new book, and it's yeah. called Transactional Analysis for Depression. It was published Correct. in two thousand and sixteen. Um, mm. It's always nice to review new books because usually they they um, push you know push the ideas and the research and our, our ideas of therapeutic interventions further. Uh, is this the case in this book, Bob? Yeah, and uh, Dr. Mark Widdison, who again has been in TA probably for, I don't know, 15, 16 years, though he, you know, he's perhaps 50, I don't know by now, but he's a very um, lucid writer. He wrote that very successful book, uh, 100 Techniques in Transaction Analysis 2011, which we reviewed earlier. This is our 33rd book, and I think it's quite apt um, in many ways because it's right up to date, as you know, 2016. And he does talk in this book, if you're talking about up to date material, on some of the ideas of neuroscience a little bit, mm. and some of the ideas on the latest medication for depression. So you are right in that, he brings it right up to date. And he does talk about concepts of transaction analysis, which are central since 1961 but also talks about how you can use the uh, TA concepts in the relationship. So it is up-to-date book. And, it's, and what I like about this, and why I'm glad it's, we've got it going, is it's specific, it's specifically aimed towards the client of depression. So you know, Roy, and I've done this many times over the years, because I think it, I often think it, it won't be the case, but I put the word depression into Google, and it comes up huge count. In other words, of all the mental health terms you can put into Google, number one search term in mental health is depression. Yeah, yeah, and it's really interesting because it can mean different things to different people, can't it? Mm -hmm. You know, it's um, it's a kind of it's a kind of very broad brush. Depression for some people can be, you know, just feeling a bit fed up, and mm -hmm. for others it could be absolutely crippling and and you know disempowering and um paralyzing um, mm. and everything in between so what you, you, you said you drew on neuroscience and a, a little, bit, a little bit about neuroscience and also a discussion on medication it's kind yeah, of inter it's kind of interesting isn't it because it's kind of t already the book seems to be touching on one very new discipline which is that of neuroscience but also acknowledging um antidepressants which you know, yeah, which, which is at the end of the book. The majority of the book is about, though, how to how to build up an adult-to-adult -adult working relationship with the client in front of you when they come, and also really having at its essence that the cure for depression or the resolution for depression is in the child ego state, number oh. one, and number two establishing a uh, or facilitating in the client the ability to developing what I would call a compassionate parent ego state. Oh, interesting. So um, I'm thinking of the book now whether it talks about compassionate mindfulness, but if it doesn't, it should do. Um, but in the book, it particularly talks about the establishment and the identification of a nurturing parent in a compassionate dialogue with the child because the idea is from Mark and from TA generally I think that we depress ourselves and are often following a here we go again the word script again no. early decisions which we've learned from childhood yeah. uh, which form the basis of our low mood and often it's the, what we call in TA the internalized critical parent that is um, impinging or keeping down, if you like, 
the vitality of the child. Yeah, it's really interesting, isn't it? Because we just we just reviewed another book, which is another video called Born to Win. Um, mm -hmm. it, it kind of touches on that, the fact that our script decisions, those messages that we interject in, in childhood and carry through the arc of our lives, can be can be sometimes really um, disabling. And I remember in one of our many videos um, that we've we've done over the years, you saying that depression is repression of feelings. Yeah, definitely. That we, I, just, I saw somebody today who came in with low mood, and we identified depression. And he was talking about a metaphor, if you like, of um, a pressure cooker, and that uh, he kept his feelings repressed, and it took so much energy to keep all these uh, feelings down, that the feeling that came with that was depression, because the amount of energy keeping the feelings in the pressure cooker mm. took a lot of his effort. Yeah, yeah. And therefore, um, it's, it's a turning inwards process, it's a repression process. And um, as we repress ourselves and we use all that energy, there's less energy for vitality, joy, happiness, mm. zest mm. for life, or, or even just going to work. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a really good example, that, isn't it? Uh, and also, of course, with pressure cookers, you usually have a safety valve, and when they go, they, yeah. go, they, they, go, they go in a spectacular fashion. I can remember uh, yeah. we having one at home, and it went with such a, an impact that yeah. uh, we thought the roof was going to come off. Yeah, so they can explode, or you can um, incapacitate yourself and not get out of bed. Yeah. 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 Either way. Either yeah. way. And this is a great book in a specific plan, like I said different stages work you, you get to know the story you look for the early decisions that um, are at the bottom of the cr crippling life plan which brings a depression on then you uh, look for the critical parent which is uh, pinging down on the child and uh, repressing the, uh, the the energy of the child and then you help them uh, as if they take ownership of these crippling life scripts if you like you help them transform or change um, their decisions into a more manageable ones in the here and now and part of that is desensitizing the child sorry the parent ego state so the adult can take more charge and help uh, the child in this battle against the parent yes. if you like and turning the volume turning yeah. the volume down that's of the critical parent that's traveled yeah. through the arc of time Correct. yeah yeah well yeah. it sounds a fascinating book it, it, it seems it seems from what you said this is a book really that focuses on treatment planning yeah and how to integrate how to integrate the new ways of being in life is another central part of this book and uh, I think that's so important because it's not just about identity problems not just about helping the person become aware and taking ownership of new destinies but also helps helps the person integrate new ideas and ways into life so they can take charge of their own destiny instead of you know, this sort of process of feeling so down in life, not really knowing where it all comes from. Yeah, because I suppose as, as people put the new script in process, yeah. then they're experiencing maybe a, a, experience, a phenomenological experience that they've not experienced before. And that Correct. could be, that could be uh, quite scary, I would imagine. Very, very scary. So they need the support of the therapist. They need to be able to... Uh, use their own resources from their adult in the here and now mm -hmm. and realize they've got those resources in the here and now and they don't have to live in the past. Um, and in that process, it's very important to do things like eat well, exercise, all these ways that you keep yourself in the here and now. Yeah, and it really does link in, doesn't it, to the modern ideas in mental health, that it's mm -hmm. an holistic approach. It's not just going to therapy. It's about what you eat, exercising, um, you know, you, you, you t you've touched on that there's, there's some uh, part about medication and neuroscience. Mm. You know, so it does seem quite a holistic book. Mm, so, would, would this be one for a more experienced practitioner, maybe a student coming to the end of the studies? Um, it's an interesting one. Certainly, uh, for my second year at the Manchester Institute, they have to start uh, doing, cl you know, clinical placements. That means they go to they go uh, parts of agencies where they actually start to see clients voluntarily. And as I said, 
I wouldn't like to put a statistics on how many of the clients of my practice have come in with depression. Now, they might, they, they might go on to other things, and, or you might have other multi-diagnosis with it, but they will find through their placements and the agency people that they see that probably a high number will come with depression. Mm -hmm. So from very early on in their clinical training, from second year onwards, they need to have some guidelines on how to deal with people who come in with such um, conditions. And I say gen depression is such a common one. Mm -hmm. so, it's from, so I would say it's, it's reading from the second year onwards when they start their clinical journey, when they start seeing clients. I think it's a book to really um, have at your bedside for that clinical journey because depression will come up over and over again in that clinical process. Yeah, so maybe if you watch this and you join in your second year, um, mm. it, may be, it may be one to put on the, the reading list. Definitely, definitely. It, it is an interesting book. It's called Transactional Analysis for Depression. It's by Mark Widdison. It's yeah. published in 2016. We'll yeah. put a link below. You click on that and that will take you to the book. And right at the end of the video, which will be uh, this way, um, we're going to stick a, a little picture at the end so you can see what the book looks like. As always, Bob does this. There's no um, fee. He's not being sponsored by the book company. He does it for his love of literature and share his knowledge. So as always, Bob, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Rory.